All right, sweet, it's good. <laughs> sweet, uh, let's skip this thing. So before everything, uh, I would like you guys to install MongoDB because that might potentially take a while to install. So if you guys can just go to this uh, link, then for a step to install MongoDB so that you can let it run so while we are talking about something else. Yeah, so I will give you guys like a few minutes. Open the site. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna start with templating. So let me just kind of justify like why we need templating, right? So like in the past semester, we have worked on our uh, like awesome resume page for so long, and we have like a super pretty website, right? And everybody's happy with it. But if you actually look at the code, like this is how we code it, right? Literally, we have like hundreds, of thousands of lines of HTML, which is Doable. I mean, that's how the website is supposed to be. That's why how the like the, the file is supposed to be. But I don't know how you guys feel about this kind of a coding style. Like like when you look at the screen, I don't know if you feel like this just because you have like a thousand lines of code. But literally, this is how I feel about this. Like, I know if you guys kind of remember. Let me just pull these things out very quickly. Uh, I think uh, it's gonna be. Uh, let me just start the server a little bit. So, yeah, so everybody remember, remember this page, right? So, uh, I can tell like when we are developing this part, like I saw Titus did this part. He literally could copy paste every single one of them, paste it there, then put the correct, like the skill level things there. That literally took him like half an hour to do this. And this isn't painful though. And because we're just doing this for like our own resume website, right? But what if you are doing actually like, a large scale website? then I, I feel that, that kind of thing will actually be painful, right? So think of a website like Yahoo or uh, whatever other website that will have like thousands of millions of like similar web pages, right? Think of Yahoo, like for every single piece of news, they have exactly the same page, but only the news being different, right? So there's no way that Yahoo is going to hire like, like a thousand coders to be, like, just be sitting there on their seat, right? Copy paste websites, right? There must be something simpler. That's the thing that we're going to talk about today, which is called templating, right? So basically what templating does is actually, it helps you to separate the views and the data. So what, with templating, what you end up need to do is actually set the skeleton of the website, make sure like how it looks is correct on the HTML site. And for the contents, you actually you only put placeholders there. So when we actually have contents coming in, we just fill out the website with a different kind of content. So think of that, that will actually save us a lot of time, right? So we can have like a web developer focusing on like how the website's gonna look like, then we have like editors or whoever, right, can focus on the text or the content. So uh, for templating, actually, there are, there are a lot of choices we can have. So this is an awesome, uh, this is an awesome website uh, where it lists a bunch of the templatings and you can actually select which one you want to use. Uh, go ahead. How to find the program, you mean MongoDB you're talking about? Oh. oh yeah, I mean, Scott can help you. Yeah. So uh, we have got a bunch of like choices, right? Um, templating engines. Uh, but today we're not gonna talk about all of them. Instead, we're only gonna talk about one of them, which is EJS. And I don't know if you guys are appreciate my Photoshop skill. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the particular reason why we're gonna talk about EJS is because uh, unlike other like templating languages, EJS, uh, syntax is literally the same as JavaScript, which means uh, whatever you know about JavaScript, you can apply the same thing in EJS. So that would just make our life a bit easier. Uh, yeah, right? So I guess, uh, and by the way, EJS is the short, shorthand name for embedded JavaScript. I think that's kind of like a self explanatory name for that kind of thing. So uh, I'm going to be. Uh, do some live coding and kind of show you guys how to set things up. But before that, I guess we can somehow go back to get the pizza, or yeah, yeah. right, right. So, uh, so let's come back to this. Right, this is our server.js file. Remember when we are working on the Node.js at the fourth lecture, I think. Right, this is structure. Remember, we initialize some variables, then we create an instance for the express. Then we kind of like define the path, uh, right? 
So right now, let's just create a one more file resume. Uh, bad. Right, called resume. Unless you guys have better name. Request response. Right, that's how the thing's gonna be like. So if we copy paste this, go to resume. Resume, right? Then you run this here. I don't know if you guys can see this. Okay. Yeah. Node dev. Oh, by the way, uh, node dev is the command, like node command for the de developer, which will detect if your file changes. It will like restart the server automatically. So I just found this is actually very useful. So node dash dev uh, space server. Then we have our server up there. So you go to the browser. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. If you already have Node installed, you, can you just use Node then? No, this is actually part of Node. Okay. Yeah. So, right, we still have the page. We go to resume. Boom! Sweet. This looks exactly the same as what? As we had before, right? <laughs> okay, so, but now we really want to use this uh, EJS. So, in order to do that, you may want to add one more line in the uh, in the package.json, in the in dependency file, you may want to uh, put EJS there. And I don't really remember what version I'm supposed to be using, so I'm just going to put this. So you put EJS here, remember to put a comma before that line. And the screen is kind of being flinky. Okay, see. So we put EJS here, right? And uh, this just means whatever version you have is okay which I'm assuming is going to pull the latest version for me automatically. So after that, uh, let's see if we do a... So if we do a npm install, which is going to give me the EJS. Okay, if you see this, this is beautiful. Uh, sweet, so now we have the EJS, which is awesome. So what we're going to do here is going to create an EJS instance. Uh, require. Oh no, actually, we don't even need. Nah, do we need? Oh uh, no, we don't. We don't even need the EJS instance. Why? It's because uh, we are using Express. So the good thing about Express is actually, uh, Express is actually working very well along with many other like templating languages, which includes EJS. So instead of like uh, uh, put like an EJS equal require EJS, what you do is actually right here you put app dot set view engine uh, yeah then space don't put EJS here that's it right so oh my gosh you just hit me right yeah so pretty much what it does is no 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 let me okay not nice no, good yeah, so now what it does is actually when you call rest.render, then put whatever web pages here, uh, Express is going to go to your directory, find a folder. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You're just going to go to your root directory, find a folder called views which we're just going to create here. So I'm going to create a new folder called views. Put that here. Yeah, for those you don't really see the thing. Right? Ah. Right, you have a views here. So whatever your templating file is going to... So what temp whatever templating file you're going to be using is going to be sitting in this directory. Right? So, sweet! So now I'm just going to be creating a templating file called template.ejs. Oh my gosh, uh, anybody? Then we just need to create a folder called views in our root folder. Then we create a whatever name.ejs. Let's create a template.ejs. The leader can be anything. Let's call it dog. Alright, so then we're going to save that in the, in the views folder. Sweet. So right here we put hello. Um, huh? It's dark. <laughs> right. So we save it here. Then when we put what's the name again? Dark. Yes. So we put dark here. Uh, 
I would be ex expecting this to be work. If it's not work, you blame me. Oof. Yeah, see, this is awesome, right? So, uh, right now we can literally do whatever we want, right? And apparently you want to have something that is exactly like what we're having right now, which is the index file. So, so let's copy paste the whole thing. Then <coughs> migrate that to doc. So we save this. So right now if we refresh, boom, we have this page coming back. Yeah. yeah. Right? But you know this is right now we have the page coming back, which is awesome. But you know that's not the whole point of us using tampering, right? Because we are still doing like copy and pasting. That is not that good, right? So uh, what do you want to do is actually we want to separate the view from the data. So let me just clean up everything here. Uh, hey, that's a lot. Again, you should not code like you should not code like this. If you're doing this, you're doing this wrong. Uh, view not wrap. Wait, what are those? Okay, this is the part of the wrapper still. Go, 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 go. Sweet. So now we don't have anything. All right, so I'll come back to the page. Burdell, you should not be here. Okay, so now even Burdell is not here. Let me just come back with a clean page. Sweet, right now we have a clean, clean page, right? Then let me put a div here. Uh, div saying, hey, I'm here. So sweet, hey, I'm here. Right, we have a pretty page. So, um, so right now we have this thing, but how do we put data there, right? So in order to put data there, you have to have data first. So let me create something called data. And the data need to be a JSON file. That's just how it works. So it needs to be a JSON object. Let me, hey, what should I put there? Name. Name, OK, fine, name. All right. So name is doc. <laughs> right. OK, so after you have doc here, uh, yeah. Doc JSON. So after that, right, what you do is that instead of rendering this page directly, right, then you put data here. Right? So now we have data, but hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Did I put. Oh, sorry. I just think it just breaks this thing. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Bad coding. Bad coding habits. See? And by the way, this is why no dash. That is so awesome. See, the, the restart the server for me autom automatically. So right now, I go to the page, refresh. Hey, but where's my doc? Right? The problem is, th even though we pass data here, but the template that does not know like where the data should, should go. So the way how we do it is, instead of uh, just put doc here, right? we want to use something like this. So this is just the uh, notation that EJS used. So whatever you put within those two little uh, angular bracket and the percentage mark, whatever you put in between them is going to be recognized as like an EJS language. So right here, use something called uh, equal. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's use this. Right. So yeah, you put this dash here. Then you put whatever vari variable name you have, which is name. Right. So we put a name here. What do we expect? It's going to be, hey, doc JSON is here, <laughs> right? This is awesome, right? So, and the, what is good about this is uh, you can use this to populate many other things. Let me create a dog array <coughs> called dog array, right? Dogs. Oh, yeah, actually, that's a better name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have... Mm. Tom, Pug. Pug? I like Pugs. Pugs? Pugs. Pugs. Noodles. Noodles. Did, did I hear, did I hear, hear noodles? noodles? Okay, let me put noodles. <laughs> okay, then. Oh. Hey. Uh, Wait, was that noodles or noodles? Okay. Right? Teapots. Okay. okay. And I'm just coming up with random names. Okay. Alright. So right now we have three dogs. 
Let's come back to this page. So remember I mentioned earlier, like EJS has a really similar syntax to JavaScript. So this is the awesome part. So what do you do? Instead of writing something random, you write for. Oh, actually, no, you don't. You don't write for here. Let me. Let's see. What do we have is a uh, doc. Let's put docs, right? We have docs. Then remember in JavaScript we have this for each function. And if you remember this callback thing, right? We have a function. We can have uh, every individual single individual doc reference here. Then we can have a uh, index, but let's not use index. No, actually, let's use index here, right? Then you put whatever you have in between. Then what you do is you need to close this for loop, right? See? Literally everything here is like actually PHP, right? This is a very similar to PHP, right? It's like yeah. right. But you just have this, right? So if you ignore those like special EJS mark, this is literally just JavaScript, right? Question? So when do you need the dash for the hyphen? Oh, okay, yeah, sweet. That's a very good question. So what dash means is actually instead of putting putting whatever like in, instead of like interpreting uh, the things I put in between as like my JavaScript, right? You actually recognize this as a variable. Then you put out the the value for this variable, right? And uh, actually, there are a bunch of other things uh, that EJS supports. You can look it up. But right now, like I think this is the only thing that we care about is to put out the value inside this variable. So let's see. So everything here. So right now, we have a loop here. So what we're expecting is we're going to have three different docs. Now it's restarting the server. Hmm. I guess I'm really bad at JSON. All right, server is back on. Boom. Hey, actually, let me make this prettier. Right, so right now we have actually three different docs here. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me zoom in a little bit. Right, so we have right now we have like three pretty docs in here, which is awesome, but you guys don't really like this, right? You kind of want to like blend this with uh, HTML a little bit, right? So let's do this. Uh, let's see. So we want to have a list, right? Instead of a div, let's have an unordered list, right? So every single line, you can just blend your HTML markups with this EJS awesome stuff. Everything will just working. Will just be working, right? So let's see. So right now you have this. Break three lines, right? So right now, we have a list. This is awesome. <laughs> Literally, like we are like a blending HTML and JavaScript, but not really, right? <laughs> then now, say I love noodles best, right? Like I don't really like the other two docs, but I still want to list them. So what I can do is actually I'm gonna make a condition here. So say, uh, left, <coughs> right? We remember we always put this mark mark here before we write any JavaScript. Then we say if index, you know, good coding habits. If index equal to, I think my noodle is one, right? Yeah, my noodle is one. Okay, so if index equal to one, I'm gonna do something differently. Uh, right. Then else, I'm gonna just print out this string. Uh. Right, yeah, right. Uh, so I think that is, so say when index is equal to one, let me say, make right, make it strong. Okay, that's a very good suggestion. Strong, strong. Yo. Uh, no, you don't hard code stuff. Right, I will put this mortation mark here. So that then we want to put a noodle. Right, docs. Uh, right. Then is the best. Right. So boom. Right. So this is pretty cool. Right. We can blend whatever you want here. Uh. But what if I don't know? Okay. Let's see. So let's see. So right now we have this. Right. This is this is awesome. So pretty much, I think that's. How you can use the EJS, though the, I didn't talk much about it, but literally, right, you can do whatever logic you want to with uh, using JavaScript, right? Okay, but still, you know, like, this is just a simple example, right? But when we look back at our awesome original website, which I'm glad I still keep it here, right? 
actually we have a lot of those different parts here right you don't really see like we have this like kind of like the nav bar up there we have like a self introduction part right then we have like each different sections here right at the very bottom we have the footer all right and it's good to have things being templated but again you don't really want to keep like every single thing in like a templating file right because that would just eventually cost you like a giant, giant, giant like .ejs file, right? We want to simplify things. That's why uh, EJS and I'm assuming pretty much all of those templating languages they support something called partial. So what we do is actually is, again it's very similar to PHP. What we do is you write include, then whatever templating file uh, header, right? You want to add. Then again, we create something called header.ejs corresponding to whatever name we put there. Save that into the views folder. So, and put it outside. Right? And right here, you can have a header HTML. Sweet. Header, right? Then put h1 here. h1 here. Right? Hey, here is my doc house. Right? Then we go back to the resume part. Right? We have everything here. And even with partial, we can still use those variables and those JavaScript within that thing. Right? So let me create something else. Uh, wait, call this doc house. Okay. Right? So note that we only pass our data to the doc file, the doc.ejs file, right? But Actually, when you are using partial, you, like the data will still be passed into the partial. So instead of putting that here, let me just put this special marks here. I always remember this. Then say <coughs> name. All right. Then we're gonna have a name here, and remember what to put the dash here. So, boom. Say, see, it's still a dog house. I guess it's a bad example. Dog house again. Right? Hey, so right now we have the doghouse again. Right? So that is pretty much it, right? You can use your own data to uh, render whatever whatever page you want to have. And again, to make this thing easier, sometimes I think a good practice is going to be you should create another folder called data. Yeah. Right? And within that, you create something called data. Uh, my data. Okay, fine, right? Resume, if you like it. <laughs> uh, resume dot JSON, right? Save the within data. And uh, by the way, this is how you read a file in Node. You should require another packet, which is I think uh, mm. FS, short for file system, I believe. Uh, then instead of using that here all right you have this read file the file name is going to be data slash uh, resume the json and uh, ntf8 is it wait is it called ntf i uh, mean u u t utf yes sorry <laughs> utf8 my bad uh, uh, question? Do you have to install the module FS or it is Uh, module FS, I, I do believe it's a in thing. But actually, that's a very good question. Yeah, that's about it. No. I, I don't think that it's built in, but let's, let's check it out. Uh, yeah, that's it. Is it? Yeah, it's part of the core API. Oh, sweet. Let's see. Right? So, see, without running anything, we still have it, right? So, let's do... And uh, because reading file actually sometimes takes time takes time so instead of putting this outside you probably want to move this in but let's just see what's going to happen if we don't do that right so we have data here equal to nothing when we put data here equal to json data so we should still have the same page right but not all the time right and the why is because you know reading reading data actually takes time right so Right, so you want to make make sure everything is asynchronous, which is the good practice of when you're coding JavaScript, right? 
like because you don't like you, you always assume like whenever you're like reading a file or like make some requests right like things don't happen immediately right so that takes time so what's gonna ha so what happens is because like you have data here then you tell the file system to read the data from here but before the data is being loaded you are, you have already started rendering your template which is not gonna give you anything and I do believe see here's a, a very very bad error here saying name is not defined right but we actually have it so what do you want to do is actually you want to move this thing into this part right so make sure this function will only be called after data is being loaded then right now they better give me the same result no let's see uh... name is not defined that is very interesting Oh, did you save your um, JSON? Uh, oh, oh, thank you, sir. Okay. I mean, yeah, okay. Then <laughs> that is the expected behavior. So, on, um, really, copy, comment, save. Here we go. Oh, I hate this. See. So now we have this JSON back. Okay, so that is saved. Service restarted. Go. Still. What is wrong? Hmm. That is very interesting. Name is not defined, but. Oh, I, I see, I see what's the problem. Uh, you actually need to parse this JSON. Because what you get here is actually a JSON string instead of a JSON object. So, oh, yeah. right, so data object obj equal to, uh, I think, J, JSON parse. I think that's what that is. Okay. Right, then you parse this data and then pass this JSON object there. Good catch. Though it doesn't matter, but it's a good practice. Now we have here, clean the screen, go, boom, dog is back. Awesome. <laughs> right? So uh, that is pretty much it. And that is the basic usage of uh, EJS. And right now we're using that on the server side because we're using Node. But you can literally just like import the library, you can just like use the, the script tag to include that on your server side, then you can also use EJS on the client side if you want to. There's no big difference. The only key part is actually like you get the data from somewhere, you know the structure, then you template your file correctly, right? Then after all the sorts of thing, uh, you should be able to go. Yeah. And uh, actually later on we're gonna uh, Publish the code later, and actually, I have already redid the entire page, just using the templates and uh, uh, our awesome data. So that's pretty much it for the uh, EJS and template template import. And uh, and the, the problem we have right now is actually right now we only save the data as in a single like JSON file, right? And when we actually when you're developing something large scale, say again, come back to Yahoo because the internet Yahoo Yahoo is awesome, uh, right? <laughs> Right, like say we're at Yahoo, right? Like you have like a whole bunch of data, right? Like you have a whole bunch of like news articles, right? You don't really just want to save them in like individual JSON files, right? <laughs> I guess you'll be fired if you are actually doing that. Uh, so right now, uh, I'm gonna have Scott talk, uh, introduce you a way to store data in a super fancy way. All right, thank you guys. Hi, my name is Scott, and um, before we, uh, does anybody, everyone have uh, MongoDB installed? Or does anyone has, have any problem installing it? Could you go over the command line instructions? Command line instructions? No, uh, so if you install the uh, Mongo successfully, you when you type Mongo, when you type Mongo, that's a version, it should give you back the version of the current version of your Mongo on your 
desktop. So if that this does not uh, does not show up, there it means there is some problem with uh, with the installation. Uh, so we know you have to set the path. Yeah, you have to start, uh, set path first before you uh, run the MongoDB for the first time. You have to set a path telling the MongoDB to say where to store its data. Oh, no, 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 you don't have to, you don't have to say that. We, we have to do it, because it, 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 it do it automatically. Okay, I'm not sure on the Windows, but for the... Yeah, on Windows, we have to do it. Okay, okay, if that is uh, required, you have to do that. <laughs> and uh, so, let's get back to our presentation. Okay, so before I... Uh, Introduce the MongoDB. Here's some uh, general information about what a database is. So a database, in general, is an uh, organized collection of data, which means you, of course, can store your data on a disk. But uh, sometimes you have a large amount of data, and uh, it becomes a mess to um, manage all your data. And when you want to find some data or want to uh, update some data, it becomes a mess. So the database is designed to help you with that. And um, there are some situations we need a database. We don't need a database all the time, but when you have a large, like said, a large amount of data, where you have some multiple people using your, want to have access to the same data at the same time or at different time, but at this time you may want to have a database, and uh, it is sometimes more secure to store your data in your database. And uh, so for now, there's uh, typically two types of data uh, database. The one is the SQL, where you can call it a relational database. The SQL stands for Structured uh, Query Language, which is, uh, which is the language that you use to for the database management uh, system to deal with all the data. And the other one, and this is the one that I'm going to talk about today, is the NoSQL, which is uh, you do not use. Uh, the database is not relational. And I'm not going to, there's a course in here at Tech that tells you about uh, what a relational database is. It's going to say uh, CS400, and uh, some people are taking it now. And uh, it will take a whole semester for you to learn what uh, SQL is and what is the relational database. And that is a uh, structure for sometimes a relational database. This is actually part of the project that I did for the CS4400 last semester. This is the kind of ER diagram, which is kind of depict all the uh, relation between different tables. And if you have to have NT, um, you have to have relations, relationship, and you have to have properties for, uh, for the whole stuff. And sometimes you just don't want to use that. So sometimes you, you just wish, I should use NoSQL. And that is uh, what a MongoDB is. So this is uh, a sample document of uh, what it is what's the data stack in uh, in a MongoDB. So basically, it, here you can see you have the maker, you have the tag, you have the rig, you have the trail, you have the um, engine, and each one of them might be uh, a table in a relational database. And you may have to uh, set up all the schema to uh, say you have the constraint for different tables, and you have to set up a lot of things to uh, in order for your database to make uh, to work. But uh, in a NoSQL database, it becomes so much simpler where you can only insert, uh, have your data in a, single, in a single object and just insert into your database. OK, so uh, there are a lot of, type, uh, a lot of NoSQL database. And uh, the reason that MongoDB is uh, so popular is because MongoDB is scalable. It's a high performance, open source, schema free, document oriented database. This is from um, the uh, official website of the MongoDB, but you may you may not understand any of this. So the MongoDB, in general, it is very easy to learn and get started, and it is very schema free, which means you don't have to set up all the uh, constraint and schema in your table into different field, and uh, you can update whenever you can. So it adapts to changes, and then it's very uh, easy to use and most importantly, it's uh, JSON friendly, so it means you can 
combine the MongoDB into our project, which we use the JavaScript to uh, construct the whole structure. And now you can, the Node.js has a very good support for uh, MongoDB, and which we will see later. So this is basically what a structure in uh, MongoDB looks like. We have this database, and um, you have different collection. Each collection has many um, documents, and each document is like the data you are going to store into the uh, database. Is the collection the same thing as like a table? Yeah, the collection is the another name, another name for a table in you know, NoSQL. And the document is like the data, each row. OK, let's code. So if you have installed Mongo successfully, you should be able to, uh, if you type Mongo D, that sets up the uh, server for your Mongo database. And every time before you start to do all your query and um, update and stuff, you have to set up the server. That, that's, uh, that is the process that handles all the uh, actions that you're going to take to the database. So bef after that, you, uh, you can if you type Mongo, it should tell you uh, Mongo shell version, and uh, it's through tell you connecting to the test. Test is a built-in database that you have um, the time you install your MongoDB. And now if you tap show DBS, it gives you all, the, uh, all, your, all your database that you have locally right now. And every time you want to change to a different database, you can just say like use temp, so now we are switched to database temp. And you can even, you can create a new database by just simply saying use new database. If you for now switch to the database um, called new database, but it won't actually create the database because it's empty and um, it's kind of a lazy language, so for now if you use it, Yes, it won't show up here because it is not created until you insert the first document into the database. And now if you can if you want to show collections, there's none because you haven't created one. And if you want to um, there's no collection before again before you insert the first document into the collection. So what you might want to do is uh, DB, which stands for the current database, what is it? DB dot whatever the collection name you want to use. For example, um, for now we can have web dev meetings. That will give the uh, collection, but it's not actually created into into the database because there's nothing there. And uh, to insert into the uh, collection, you can tap DB dot meetings dot insert. And here you can insert an object, whatever you want, into the database. For example, for now we can have um, date, date. That is just a key value pairs that you want to store into the database. For example, the data we can have what is it? It's March third, fifteen, and you can have location, which is um, COC. One or two. Now, if you hit enter, this document should be inserted into your database. And now, if you say show collections, it will give you back the meetings. This isn't the index. It's um, it's a building collection, but uh, you will never have to use it. So the meetings is our collection in the in this database. I, in this collection. And uh, so, for the query, you uh, all you have to do is uh, first we have to specify the database name, which is DB. For uh, uh, for default, you can have to, to um, change to anyone uh, anything else, and DB dot the the name of your collection, which is uh, meetings dot find. This should give you back the uh, 
all the uh, all the current documents in your collection. If you don't have any, uh, if you don't specify what kind of uh, document you want to find, it will return all the uh, documents currently you have in the collection. And for example, if you want to um, add more documents into our database, you can have different dates. Say the uh, meeting of the last date. The date of the last meeting is twenty uh, fourth, I guess. The client is still here. If you get result, uh, red result back as an inserted equals to one, it means you are you have successfully inserted one document into the database into the collection. And now, if you tap db.meetings the find, it gives you back the two documents that you have for now. And if you want to um, say you want to select certain document into the uh, in the collection, you can. Specify by into in defined, and the first parameter you can say you want the date to be wait the date to be uh you wanna you wanna you wanna select the uh, the median from the last week so it was uh, the date was um twenty uh, February twenty first it will only return the document with the date. Of the with the value that you give, and you can also um, you can also update the uh, value in your field uh, for the current document in your collection. And by doing, uh, if you want to do that, you can say data meetings the update. And the first parameter in this uh, in this function, you want to specify what meetings. Okay. The update. In the first parameter, you want to specify which document you want to update. For now, if we want to uh, uh, update the document with the date of the of the days, so we say March third. <coughs> and for the second parameter, you can say set. And the rest of the parameter is the what you want to update into the document. You can either change the current field, you can insert new field into the uh, document. For example, you can say uh, pizza yes. Uh, in your first argument, you have to say date. Oh yeah. The results will say you have modified one document. So now, if we find everything, you will see that the uh, the document in the first one have the new field that we just added in. And you can also unset any field if you don't want if you don't want them anymore. You can use the same function. Instead, you can set, uh, say here you say unset and say pizza equals now. And now, if you tap again, the pizza just disappeared. And there's also another. Way to uh, update. If there's no current document into the uh, in the collection that matches your search, it will automatically um, insert a new document into the collection. And if you want to do that, you can specify it here. Say uh, you can still say update. And if you want to choose the date of the next week, which is um, tenth. And you want to set pizza yes, 
drinks. Yes. Location still here. Oh wait, and then you have to specify absurd equals true in the end. So now it doesn't find the uh, date of the March 10th in the collection that we have now, so it will insert the new document into the uh, collection. So now if you say find, it gives you back the uh, new document that you just added into the collection. And there's a uh, that's one last command uh, query that you can do here is to uh, remove any document that you, you don't want you don't want it anymore. So if you want to do that, same thing here, meetings that remove. If you just say like that, it will remove anything that is currently into the collection, and you specify what uh, specific document you want to remove. For example, you can say date equals the next date, the next week's date. It's an end removed equals to one. So now if you can find again, it is gone. So those are the basically um, basic um, Functions that you can do with the database. There's a whole lot on the document uh, on the document on the website, which you can check out. And there's uh, another awesome tool that it can help you to learn MongoDB. And I just know that when Ted has told me last week, it's called Robo Mongo. And you can just it's free and uh, it's very easy to use. You can download it now. This gives you um, a GUI where you can see all your database or your collection, collections and your documents very uh, clearly instead of using the uh, terminal, which you don't know anything. So now I think, since Jerry has it already, wait, yes, where is it? Yeah, yeah. You can see connect. Now you can find the database that we just created here. And that's the collection that we, uh, collection that we just created. And now you have all the documents here. And um, you can type in whatever you want into in that field. It's exactly the same. Like you uh, type the code into the shell, and uh, it works the same. So you want to. Insert one here. This is scripts uh, executed successfully, and now if you find again. There you go. You got you now have the uh, new document you just added into the collection. So that's a cool too. And uh, now we can come back to our uh, project. So for uh, for for using the uh, MongoDB into our project, we have to add some dependencies that we uh, want to use later on, which you can add into the uh, package.json. So right after EJS. You give it a comma and now you say MongoDB star save it and now if you say mm install if you download the uh, mojo of MongoDB and uh, give it as a for you to use. What? Stop. Okay. Yeah, so now if you want to use the MongoDB in our project, 
we have to since it is not a so core API into the node, we have to import it manually. MongoDB require And so I think after that you want to connect to the uh, we have this uh, MongoD MongoDB server running here so we're going to connect to that server uh, new wait this is called MongoDB, okay, MongoDB the server and for now you want to say use first is the URL for the uh, for the for the server just uh, the seven point one uh zero point zero dot one and the uh, port is uh, the default port of the database is uh is two seven zero one seven and you can change it to any number you like I guess but uh, this is the default one and you don't specify when you set up the server of MongoDB it will use this one. And finally, just a final parameter. It's an optional parameter where you can specify something else in there. For example, you can specify if you want to reconnect to the server, if it fails to connect in the first time, and then if you want to um, give it a pool size of the collections and everything else you want to set, uh, you want to config, you can type in here. But for now, we just uh, leave it blank. And after that, we want to connect to uh, a database. And so for the first parameter, we want to say which database we want to connect to. We can connect to any database we want. If there's no uh, database name in a uh, name like that, it will create one um, after you insert a first document into the database. After, uh, if, you, if you say like, we can create a database called random database and uh, there's no database called random nav but uh, it will automat automatically create one after you insert the first document into this database afterwards and the second parameter is the server that we just uh, that we just defined up there it will, uh, it will tell the uh, database where to find the database and the second one is uh, WX1, this can, this is basically the uh, red acknowledge which can help you to get back the error written into the console if you got an error it will tell you what the error is okay so now we have the uh, database set up so the uh, here this line is like uh, it's like the key to the of, to a door, but um, when do you want to open the door? It's totally up to you. So now, if you want to um, say database, uh, what is it called db dot open, that is when you want to use the uh, database you have as a key to open the door and to access get access to the database server. And now if you say db.open with, um, with a callback function of a parameter called error, if you got any error, just throw them. What is it? Oh, okay. No, no, it's uh, whatever you want. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just the, the verbal name, but actually what it is, is uh, is what we'll get from the from the uh, from the open function. This is only a callback function, and the verbal name is totally up to you. No, I think the number is the word error. Okay, yeah. my bad. <laughs> and um, so after that, if it is uh, if there's no error, you can say uh, if it a collection. This will actually get you to the whatever collection you have. If there's no collection name like this before, it will create one after you insert the first document into the into the collection. So for now, if we 
we're going to use the collection called um, data. And uh, it will also gives you back a callback function. The first parameter is the error, and the second parameter is the collection that returns to you. And again, if you um, if you got an error, you want to throw them out. And if it's just not, you can uh, you can open the uh, open the collection, and uh, you can decide whether you want to insert a document, you want to update, you want to uh, you want to get back, you want to you want to select, or you want to delete. So for now, if you want to uh, find. The parameter here is gonna it's just like what we did in the in the command line. It will specify which which document you wanna get back from the database. So for now this is a this is an empty database, this is an empty uh, empty data. So for now there's nothing to find, so we wanna insert one something into the database. And now we wanna insert say name first document it also gives you back a callback function and you can if you don't want it you can just uh, leave it up there and this should be good to go okay I will first get off this function up there You can give it a function called get uh, connect to database. So now, if we call this um, call this function, this should insert this uh, document into the collection. See if that's the that is the case. No, yes. Okay, there's an error. What? The survey is already running. It's already running. Yeah. No, that's the that's the database. I think. No, I think I closed. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, they are. It actually says the uh, insert function requires a callback function. And the first one is return result, and second parameter can give it result. And here, if we, uh, if there's again, if there's no, if there's an error, let's throw them out. If it's not, we can. Console.log see the result. It should tell you. Okay, that's uh, that's what we. Okay. That's what we insert into the um, into the collection. So now, if we go to the uh, database here. We will have this. Uh, okay, something. Let me refresh it. We have this random database that we just created, and we have the collection called data, and the data has two documents because we run the code twice because I um, set up the server twice. So there's a uh, same kind of name called first uh, document, and the second object is the same. So now what we want to do is um, since Jerry has uh, has all his data. Locally, so what we want to do is to get them into the database. So when we retrieve the data, we do not find the data on the on our local uh, file anymore. We just uh, retrieve the data from the database. So we want to do that? Just uh, Mongo has give you a a cool function called 
Mongo import, which can import a whole JSON file into the database. So you can you don't have to uh, manually insert all the uh, all the data by yourself. You can just import a whole file into the database. So the Mongo Mongo import first takes in a parameter called database. That is the database we want to we want the document to go into, and it is called random. Or we can give it a new database name, say uh, JSON. And uh, second one is the collection name. Again, it's totally up to you. We can call it uh, JSON collection. And now it's the uh, name of your of your JSON file, which is uh, resume.json. Now, if you click it, uh, okay. Sometimes you have to. Let's see. Okay. You have to add something called dash dash JSON array at the end of this um, function for the Mongo import to uh, import. Sometimes you have a the Mongo import uh, essentially has a very strict format for the uh, JSON file. But if you add the uh, JSON array at the end, it will just ignore it and uh, import whatever you have into the database. So now if we if we uh, check our database. We have a database called JSON. We have a collection called JSON collection. We have just a document that we just insert into. And now, if we want to change this, uh, the da database that we're connecting to, the name to uh, what is it called? JSON. JSON. And the name of the collection. Should be changed to a JSON collection. So now, if we run it again, so now if you want to find the document. Since we only have one document uh, in the uh, collection, we can specify the find one here. And it will give you a callback function with a. Uh, what? <laughs> and the callback function takes in, uh, again two parameters. The first one is the error, the second one is the uh, result. And if you want to console the log the result, and okay, okay. What did I do? This means that it's always running. Yeah, I think the server's always running. Yeah. Is it? And another tab maybe. Another tab. Yeah. Oh, okay. So now it gives back our uh, document that we just um, import into the database. So now we can, if we want to do this, see if it works, return the result and uh, Oops. Get rid of this. We don't have to read from the local file anymore. Oh, we do want to keep this. So at let it data equals what is the function called? Connect to the So this data should be the uh, whatever the uh, result of the function is and re return to this variable. And now if we 
Uh, no, you don't. Yeah, but there's a there are problem here because this is not gonna work out when we are uh, going back to uh back here. This parallel going to resume. Nothing shows up, and there's an error. Does anybody know why? I do think you do part because I think you think you do asynchronous then you should do asynchronous. Right, because function is still asynchronous, so you have to be careful about that. So you wanna copy all the function here. I keep doing that. And put it here. Actually, you don't have to copy the yeah, yeah. function. You can pass yeah, a callback function. Yeah, a callback function. Yeah, sure. I can do that. So, but uh, so for for now, if we uh, let's see if this works first. There we go, we got our data back again. <laughs> okay, so there is uh, do we have the uh oh, the, 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 the final version of the data? Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty cool. Uh let's see. Uh here we go. And by the way, uh, yeah, so server, right? So this is actually like the actual resume site. And you will see he has this awesome uh, database connection here. It's the same as the one we did just now. Yeah, and in view, actually, you will see I got a bunch of uh, templates. So actually, I think Swan's is super cool to show you guys. This is our original code. The, the, the original website that we have, right? Almost 300 lines of code. Uh, our new resume file. Isn't this pretty? <laughs> yeah, and actually we have like header sections. Everything's being like separated, so you will see like every single one is actually like everything's separated. And the data is actually pulled out from the database. Do you want to just go ahead and run it? Yeah. So now if we are. Uh And again, we got resume page back. And it looks the same as the before. You're missing and buffing, but uh, it's not. The data is not read from the local file anymore. It is read from the database. And so now, from, uh, that's just, uh, for example, if you have multiple users and uh, you want to just change the resume to different people, and uh, the only thing you have to do is to uh, Select different documents from the database instead of to have multiple files that have the same that have the information of the, those people. You can just store them into the database and uh, to just retrieve them back from the database by uh, changing the changing the uh, find uh, changing the constraint you you specify in the find function, and it will get back to the different different page of the different people. And this um this is pretty much about MongoDB and now uh, we have Clinton to do the uh Lightning Talk. Lightning Talk, yeah. Okay, guys, I know it's getting kind of late, so I'll make this quick.
<clears throat> Sorry, that's my 21 pin homework. I have not finished it yet. Let's do it. Midnight, so wish me luck. Good luck. Thank you. No, oh yeah, don't. You don't want to, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, this, this is our lightning talk. I'm Clayton, as some of y'all know. Uh, excited to do it. And today we're going to be talking about free domains. So yeah, this is actually part of um, my presentation from meeting three, but I never got around to it because um, those of y'all who are there, you'll remember that it was like a super long meeting. So we just could not get to it. But um, I'll just take care of that now. So um, a top-level domain is something like a .com, .edu, and um, they cost money to, to reserve a name in one of those. But there are some top-level domain providers that are free. So um, I'm going to talk to you about some of those and some of the pros and cons. Um, pros is free. Everyone likes free stuff. And there's a lot of unclaimed names for you. So your own name plus last name is probably available um, for a lot of these uh, domains which is pretty neat. Um, on the other hand, they're not as prestigious as like a, a paid domain. Um, and because they're free, uh, some of them do have a reputation for uh, garnering like um, unsavory types that are trying to distribute malware and things because um, that's obviously less overhead to, to do evil things like that. So um, if you're at all interested in like optimizing a website for a search engine, do not get a free domain because Google will shut that down. They do not like that. So you won't really show up very much if you have a free domain on Google. Uh, so let's do it anyways though. Um, so if, if you have like a little project that's not um, a big deal and you're not trying to get like, um, you're not trying to get on the um, search engine, then there's really no harm in uh, having a free domain. So this is a site called freenom.com and my internet's pretty slow but if it loads, um, no it's not gonna load, okay. Oh, here we go, okay. <clears throat> so basically there's there's a collection of top level domain providers that got together and I don't know the specifics but they made a website called freenom.com uh, and it allows you to easily like just type in a name and it'll tell you if it's available or not. Let's see. Um, my name is Clayton. So I'll do Clayton C. Cusera. And we'll see if it's, we'll see if .tk is available. .ga. Oh yeah, .ga. Uh, this is not Georgia. This is um, the Gabonese Republic. So yeah. So don't, don't think it's Georgia. But yeah, let's see if that's available. Uh, by the way, you do have a choice of domains, like there's .ga, there's .tk. Um, from what little, very little research I've done, .tk has a more forgiving like um, terms and conditions, so you might want to look at them. Um, for a lot of these domains, I think there's some, there's some condition where like you have to get 30 hits per month or something to keep it, uh, which is not optimal. Uh, but .tk doesn't have that, so yeah. You can always make like a bot. <laughs> So, yeah, cool. It's available. Um, that's neat. Unless some, someone grabs it first, but don't do that. So you can, no, you don't want to. Yeah, I want 12 months. I don't want to pay any money. <clears throat> so I can go ahead and order this. Okay, and then from there you get you can either forward it, which is um, that's how that's how our current uh, GT Web Dev project works it's through forwarding. So if you go to georgeburdell.tk, that's actually free domain TK, uh, and it takes us to 
our website that's hosted um, through Heroku. So you can actually host projects on Heroku, uh, and then you can uh, change the domain name to be whatever you want, whatever you can get for free. Um, so yeah, uh, those of you who are here on meeting three will remember this page. It's not updated with the cool CSS. I'm, I'll get to that soon, though. But um, yeah, that's that's free domains. Um, not to my knowledge. Yeah. So that's kind of it, guys. I don't I don't want to take too long because it's kind of late. So disperse. Thank you. This is this, it's the next meeting, so a week from now. That's the word. Yes. Not as bad.